G'day and welcome back to Talking Leadership. This is Eric Perez. Thank you again for joining me. And as promised, more great content on the way regarding this thing called leadership. And today's guest hails from the United States and adds to the podcast I've done with guests from an international leadership and entrepreneurial perspective. So by way of background, my guest today is the CEO and co-founder of Simple LLC. Can I welcome to the podcast, Nick Danko? How are you, Nick? Hey, Eric. I appreciate it, man. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure and an honor to join the uh, the laundry list of folks that have come before me and those that are uh, destined to follow. So it's a pleasure. Thank you. Mate, no, thank you. So what's been your journey to becoming a CEO and co-founder in 100 words or less, mate? Hundred words or less. Good, good question. Okay, so no, no, it's okay. I think no inevitably pressure, no it's pressure. that. Yeah, right. It's that. It's that independence. I think that's inevitably what you know. What most people aspire to is right to be your own boss, to work for yourself, and to have that flexibility, that freedom. That is sort of that what we aspire for, and it was certainly what I aspired to do after the time spent in the industry that I've been in for the last 15 going on 16 years. You know, you mentioned the the company at the beginning of the the cast. The simple is the name of the company, formulated obviously just last well, I shouldn't say obviously, but uh, cuz you guys wouldn't know that, but formed last year and uh, we're in the payment space. And we're in the bank card um, field. And so I've been doing it as I said for 15 16 years. It's really all that I've known in my uh, in my career and <clears throat> I decided that, you know, after working so many long days, long hours, 12, 14 hour days, you know, weekends, getting caught up preparing for the week to come. I felt like if I was going to work so hard as if I owned the company that I might as well work that hard and truly own the company myself. So that was sort of the mindset as to what what pushed me to make that leap um, and learn how to build the plane on the way down as I jumped off the, the cliffside. Uh, but it was, it was actually COVID related as well. Um, the pandemic had a lot to do with it. It got me thinking, nobody really clocks in and clocks out. You know, virtual is is the way of the world. Now we're all remote working, or at least we were obviously at, at the height of the pandemic. And I thought, you know, if I'm going to put this in and put forth this effort, I'm going to do it for myself. Um, and obviously let everybody else reap the benefits and hopefully um, feel the rewards of my hard work and labor. And, uh, and that's kind of what I'm working on. You mentioned you, you thought about doing this in the middle of COVID, the COVID pandemic. I, I'd be asking why the hell would you want to start a business in the middle of a pandemic? But obviously there was a, you had to, you had to start it at some point. And I don't, I don't think we're going we're going to be rid of this, pandemic or the issues associated with it for quite some time so either businesses choose to be in a holding pattern and until goes things go back to what people would say is normal or uh, maybe what we've got now is the new a new normal I hate the term but it's it's one that's been it around quite a bit did you have any um, any trepidation is maybe the word I'm looking for there about starting in the middle of, of what we're going through at the moment no, and then you know you're you're spot on, man. That that phrase, the new normal, and the word pivot, those were the two sort of overused phrases and or or words of the of the year. And so I'm with you. I hate using them. I hate hearing them, but they are certainly relative. Now, what made me want to do this in the midst of a pandemic, dude? It was an itch that I just I've been wanting to scratch for some time. And the pan pandemic, like I said, sort of I don't want to say forced my hand because I wasn't desperate to do this, but internally I was. I was, um, it called to me more than ever during that time. The company that I was with prior to starting my own, they, they put everybody on a 25% a um, pay decrease when COVID hit to keep everybody employed, which I thought was, was good. They, they held everybody's job. I had nothing against that. Um, they kept everybody employed, kept the team intact. So that way it was, you know, all for one, one for all. If you will, you know, you heard about companies laying off and furloughing people left and right. I think it was around that time where I, I thought I no longer wanted sort of my, my future to be determined. Obviously, a pandemic is going to alter the, the state of the world, which it, which it has. But, but I wanted to be in control of my own sort of destiny uh, a bit uh, and take a, take a little bit of that back. So I was, I was part as well as everybody, you know, management all the way down. Everybody took that decrease. And we all did it, like I said, for the greater good. However, I didn't want to be in a position like that moving forward. I wanted to have a little bit more flexibility, a little bit more control and some more independence to not have to worry about things being pulled back on me. I wanted, like I said, I wanted to grab it by the horns a little bit more. So 
while this itch was always there, it's something that I've been wanting to do for a few years now. There were certainly opportunities within the industry where I think back now and I'm like, eh, I should have done it prior to this, or I saw this coming. This was a big movement in the industry and I should have should have gotten ahead of it. I feel like now is as good a time as any, especially when it comes to contactless payments now. I'm not sure what you know or what obviously your listeners know in regards to the payment space, but because of the pandemic, there's been a very strong push towards contactless payments, understandably so. And so that was sort of the, those were sort of the make or breaking points, if you will, for why I ventured into what I ventured into and when I ventured into it. That makes sense. And it's relative to each industry sector, I guess, your opportunities to make your mark um, are relative to where you work. And it's interesting that that you make mention that you saw some trends and you you know you analyze what those were and the hindsight's a, it's a wonderful beautiful thing because you can go back and think I should have gone just at this point and I would have taken advantage of this particular trend but until you do it, it you know hindsight is 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 um always a relative thing and I, I believe that once you take that particular step to go forward then you've got to take it uh, warts and all and and hopefully um. There's not too many um, problems when you do head off in, in the direction that you want to. And it's, it seems like you're, you're well on that pathway. The, the growth alone, you know, over the course of, uh, of 2020 has been immense. You know, with the incorporation, obviously, you know, Zoom, Google Meets, of course, right? All these different platforms that we can connect. Social media efforts, you know, that's, I mean, that's technically how you and I connected. I've made so many more connections in the span of the last six months, you know, than Oh gosh, who knows how many years prior. I mean, LinkedIn alone, you know, it's not that I have this huge following. It's it's a growing, it's a constantly growing thing. But I've I've gained more connections, like I said, in the last six months, reaching out and meeting and talking with and speaking with people virtually, you know, just making those connections. It's it's very organic. Uh, albeit electronically, but still a very organic thing that I'm building that out and I'm making these these newfound friendships with people having the opportunities to speak with you, uh, you know, it, it's allowed me to, and like I said, I hate that word pivot, but, um, but a lot of people have pivoted the way that they've done things. And I've changed my, my mindset and the way that I've approached certain situations, conversations as a result of COVID. Uh, you, this podcast alone is something that would not have occurred. You know, obviously we don't know, but looking back, what, 12 months ago, I had no interest. Well, I don't want to say any interest, but I, know I had I had no opportunity prior to uh, COVID. I wasn't heavily doing social media, and so a lot of the folks that I've met and had these conversations with, including yourself, have have gotten me to a point where I'm, you know, here today speaking to you on this podcast now. Yeah, and, and I appreciate that. And yeah, I think it's the same for all of us in this space that um, the li LinkedIn in particular has provided a pathway for people to to share conversations. And, and the more professionals like yourself get onto LinkedIn and start looking at what's out there, you start finding people that are engaging topics that you're interested in and or could, could maybe be uh, connections uh, either for yourself professionally or professionally for the business. And that, that that's the power of these kinds of mediums and it, it I guess it, it also speaks to the fact that people now are looking to make connections not just in their own backyard but internationally as well and I, I guess that's the power of having something like LinkedIn which people keep telling me is is the uh, adult version of Facebook so you know hopefully you've got serious people <laughs> on, on serious yeah. people on LinkedIn wanting to have some some conversation so uh l let me ask <laughs> That's you because it, it, it sounds like it sounds like you've you've been around your industry long enough to have a considered view on the following now you don't have to name a particular business because I'm, I'm assuming that in the space that you work in you've seen a lot of different business people and, and leaders in their own right do you think that there's a, a, a big distinction if any between the leadership and managerial function Nick <clears throat> the leadership and managerial function elaborate yeah. a bit more what is it that you're looking for yeah, yeah. So you, you've met leaders in your travels. Do you think yep. they do something different in the business than the managers that you might have met in those same businesses? It's it's kind of like the old adage, right? Where leaders lead and and uh, and managers sort of expect you to follow, I guess, right? Sort of sort of thing. You know, I don't know. It, is it? Is it? <laughs> I don't know. I don't well, know. I don't have the answer. That's that, how much you knew. <laughs> well, I think. 
<laughs> you know, leaders, obviously, you know, a true leader, you, you want to inspire others to greatness. You know, look at, gosh, let's take Michael Jordan, right? This is a separate guy in a separate industry, completely different from Bankard, right? This is a wholly separate conversation. But if you look at these these true leaders, well, Tom Brady, even for instance, and I and, and I don't mean to bring up just U.S. Or, or American athletes, but but you know, Tom Brady specifically, just because of recent events, he just won the Super Bowl. You know, spent the majority of his career with the New England Patriots, was a nobody coming out of college, nobody gave him a chance, sort of thing. He's risen to this superstardom level and goes to a different team. I don't know if anybody you know was thinking that this was going to happen year one with Tampa Bay, other than Tom Brady, you know, brings Rob Gronkowski out of retirement. 12 months later, they're hoisting the Super Bowl trophy. You know, leaders know how to bring others to a level of greatness. It goes to with Michael Jordan again. Um, and I hate for these to all be athlete type of uh, examples, but, you know, Jordan was, was harsh on his team, but he expected the best of you. He brought you up to another level where if, if you, if Jordan passed you the ball, he expected you to make that shot. If you didn't, you weren't going to get the ball again. And that could have determined your career. You know, he got you, he brought you, he, he rose you to his level or he tried to bring everybody to his level. It's what all these guys do. It's what a great leader does. They try to make everybody around them better. It's not all about me. It's not me saying, Hey, I'm the greatest. I'm the one leading the charge sort of thing. It's like, Hey, we're all in this together. You know, let me help you get to another level. So from a leader to a manager, you know, I, I, I've had, I've been around a lot of leaders. I've had my, my fair share of mentors in this industry, and I've certainly been around my fair share of managers as well. So I, just speaking from personal experience, I've experienced both leaders and managers, and they don't always, they don't always uh, exemplify the same manners, behaviors, um, viewpoints. So I think that there is a distinction between the two, just from my own personal experience. Yeah, no, look, I appreciate that. And no, the sporting analogy is often quite a, a good one. And yes, the, what do we call it, American football gridiron, the gentleman that you spoke about yeah. before, he was covered in our news quite extensively. And uh, yeah, I, I think that the focus of those reports were that uh, he's, he's he's older now. He's not he's not a young guy anymore, is he, relative to others? No, he, no, Brady's, yeah. yeah, Brady's in his early 40s, but... He's openly come out and said that he wanted to play until he's 50, if I'm not mistaken. And the way that he looks, especially in this last year, he very well darn good. You know, I feel like he's fully capable of winning another title or two. I don't know what he wants or what his plans are, but it, it apparently seems that whatever he, he aims to do, he's going to succeed and, and make sure that that happens regardless of, of what it takes. So I think he's got seven rings now. I wouldn't be surprised if he's going to aim for 10 by the time all is said and done. Will he do it? You know, I, I don't know, but it'll be fun to watch. You do find that uh, leaders, in, in some respects, the, you get better with age. And obviously, um, in, in his circumstance, having moved to another team and led them to to um, the, the pinnacle of that sport, that, yeah, that there's something in, in that leadership function that is very different to the management function. Yeah. So look, it, your response isn't, is, isn't any different in terms of that, the, the difference between leadership and management. And I guess uh, the, the way it's been put a lot of times, I think this, this, the textbook distinction is leaders do the, the visioning, whereas managers do the operations and the, the, the actual doing of the, the vision of the leaders in, in some, in some respects, but oh, I think there's a crossover as well. I mean, I've, I've heard enough, from from podcast guests and i think i'm hearing the same from yourself is that a manager could be a very good leader in their own right um you don't have to necessarily have the title to to think in those ways and i guess you're an example of that you, you move from managerial leadership roles you know in an organization to running one yourself and there's always that leg that you know maybe you could do something different obviously you've you've decided to go down that that pathway yourself now speaking of that and this this is um this conversation this bit of the conversation segues nicely into the next topic is leadership a lonely pathway is it a lonely road because i've i've often heard it discuss um as a lonely pathway or is it as lonely as you make it i think it's the latter as opposed to the former i do think that it's as lonely as you make it you know you you hear these you hear the stories of folks that block it all out they've got this very regimented schedule they are determined to hit their goal They've got that success measure in place. I will say that that 
when I decided to make this jump to do what it is that I'm doing now, that I did block out a lot of the noise, right? So you kind of have to filter out the minutia. And as a result, there, you know, just by way of doing so that there's going to be some connections that are, are lost or, you know, it does, I think that you, you kind of have to clear the schedule. You kind of have to clear the path a bit and, and become hyper-focused and laser-focused. You know, I've got obviously children. And so I'm, they're very much a big, big part of my life. They're always going to be around. Family's always going to be around. You know, the people that you surround yourself with, that's of your choosing you know, where your success level is going to be. You want to surround yourself with the right people. So I think that it's as lonely as you make it. It doesn't have to be super lonely. Obviously you want people that are there. And I think that you, you need to have a council of folks in your life to bounce decisions off of as you go through these rigors. So again, it doesn't have to be super lonely. I wouldn't want to make all the decisions that I've made along the way by myself. I'm happy that I that I have somebody to sort of bounce stuff off of. I I, I personally need that feedback, that counsel that I seek for you know stronger advice or, or words of wisdom. You know when the, when the time calls. That makes sense. I'm the same. You, you want to surround yourself with some people that can give you hopefully what is considered considered advice. You know, being being critical is not where I'm coming from. I think more. Uh, constructive feedback on what it is that you're doing. So yeah, no, I, I would I would tend to agree with that. Nick, measuring success. Now you've been around in your industry, you said for 15 plus years, 16 years. What does success look like for you beyond your KPIs of of uh, making your your budget for that month or that that week or that year? What what does success look like for Nick Danko? Man, you know, every business obviously has to to be successful when it comes to uh, the finances. I get that. But honestly, I don't measure success that way. It, it really isn't a dollar figure for me. It's if I can find a way to benefit others and make somebody else's life more rewarding in what it is that I'm doing, that's honestly the success for me. That's the measure. If, if I can make sure that, you know, me and my family are comfortable as well as others, you know, and they can benefit as to what I'm doing, that's where it's at for me, Eric. It really is. I, 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 you know, I'm not, I'm not seeking to be, you know, the next Gates, Zuckerberg, Bezos, Musk. You know, I, that those dollar amounts are, you know, so far out there. It's, it's, you know, unfathomable for me to think of what are in some of these, um, some of these guys' bank accounts. It certainly would make life a lot easier, right? But as they say, more money equals more problems. But the, the more success financially that comes in, the more I would be able to do with it for others. I'm more about the communal effort. I want everybody to sort of benefit. Now, how, how does that happen in bank card, right? Well, maybe it's not so directly related to bank card. It's not you know, directly in the merchants that I'm supporting, setting up, um, processing for, even though they will benefit you know, as it comes to pricing, increased revenue, decreased costs, all that good stuff. But it's yeah. what can I do with what I'm building to leverage it for others? You know, I've got a dear friend of mine that I grew up playing playing ball with. Uh, he uh, he runs a foundation. His name's Afa Manaima. He runs a, a foundation called the Gene Co Foundation, G E A N C O, and they're doing you know they're doing mission work out in Africa. His parents are originally from Nigeria, you know, third world country type environment. So they're doing medical mission efforts out there trying to provide for obviously those in need. You know, I'm huge into nonprofit and charitable efforts. So the more success in terms of the dollar figure for me would equal more success for those that I would be able to help. Um, whatever comes in for me, you know, I try to try to push out. So within reason, of course, right, I have responsibilities that I have to attend to. But the more I can help others, it, it the more you give, the more you get kind of thing. And it's not about the karmic cycle. But I truly believe that what goes around comes around. Nick, let me ask you, and, and this this is about, again, your experiences, because I, it's interesting to me when people have spent a lot of time in a particular industry sector that they will have their finger on the pulse of what effective leadership looks like. So what are the key leader capabilities required for effective leaders? The key capabilities for effective leaders. I think that, well, I think that a good leader sort of generates that sort of magnetism towards them. You know, they, it's, it's all about the vision, right? If you have a good vision and a good track record and you can inspire others for greatness as well, I think that's, that's sort of a good basis, clearly. Knowing that you don't always have to have the answers all the time as well. Like knowing that 
good leaders hire people that that are at times obviously smarter than them in certain areas because we don't have all the answers you know so having like i said a good group of people around you you know from a council from a support standpoint you know inspiring others to do better you're right the communication is key of course right um, communication, collaboration. Uh, I liked the strategic thinking, you know, but but knowing, being humble enough to obviously say that you don't always have the answers is 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 good as well. I think that that's also a, a very key capability. Um, being humble. Again, you've you've hit on something that it seems to be a trend, at least in in the discussions I'm having with people around this this idea that a good leader, or a good entrepreneur, or some someone who who straddles both those spheres. Will have um, enough self confidence and uh, lack of ego that they know when they don't know something and they'll either learn what they need to learn or they'll buy that skill in or hire that skill in to make sure that their business venture or, or not for profit or, or whatever the, the organization is that, that you can look, look outside yourself to get, um, to get those skill sets happening because of, you know, I'm yet to meet someone that I've talked to that said they've got all the bases covered, they don't need help with anything. I I don't I don't think that person exists. And if they think they exist, then they're potentially possibly delusional. We can't all be good at everything. That's just not it's it's not possible in my mind. So yeah, I, I like what you're saying there. So here's oh, most here, definitely. I need help here. every day, Eric. Yeah. I'm not too <laughs> I'm not ashamed to admit it. I do, you know, I mean there's yeah. a there's a question that comes up on on the regular every day that that I would love to say that I know the answer to the minute that question pops up, but, but I don't, you know, I have to seek, seek it out. I, I don't ever want to be, I know this sounds crazy, right? I don't ever want to be the smartest guy in the room. You know, if, if I am that I got to find a new room and I'm not admitting that I'm the smartest guy, but I always want to be in a room with people that are smarter than, than me even. So that way it brings me to a whole nother level, the same way that leaders inspire others to a level of greatness. I want to be in the room, you know, with the folks that I find to be on a whole nother level so I can pick their brains. Um, otherwise I got to find a better room. That theme has tended to come up in this discussion quite a bit, mate. So you, you put a lot of stock in, tell me if I'm wrong with the summary here, but you put a lot of stock in inspirational leaders to help guide you you're thinking and challenge what you're thinking is that more the case that you want to be cha- challenged in what you're thinking i've never written code eric for for you know we'll, we'll start there i've never written software i i don't even know where to start right i know it's a bunch of data it's ones and zeros i get that i don't know how it works i've never written code but i'm in the midst of talking to developers now to better understand how to do certain things as it pertains to my company and, and our industry and i'm fascinated by it i love you know, learning what I don't know. And I'm not, I'm not scared to make that leap into it. I will openly admit, like, I don't know the first thing that you're saying to me, you know, you got to talk to me like a six-year-old, like, give, give me, give me, give me the, you know, layman's terms here. And then we'll start from, and then I will invest the time and learn more, you know? So we started talking about different things as it pertains, like I said, to software development. And so now I'm sort of fully invested now in this space that I've never been in before. Um, we do integrated payments all the time in my industry, but I've never actually written the code to understand how the payments are integrated. Now I'm taking the time to invest some effort, um, which is only going to benefit me and better me long term. So yes, I I do like hearing the inspirational leaders that push you to you know. It, for me, it's I know it's it, we're going to get a little cliche here, but you know it's it's I need some sort of traction every day. If I'm not moving forward, then I'm, I'm going the wrong direction sort of thing. I need to at least take one step forward every single day, regardless of what it is. I've got to have at least one, one step further on the journey. And it may be one small step. It may be one giant leap, right? For mankind kind of thing to quote you know, the, <laughs> the moon landing. But still, but, but I think you get what I'm saying. If, if, I don't, if I don't feel like I made any traction, I felt like I lost. 10 paces, you know, to, I don't know. I, I, I've always got to have some sort of forward motion. Yeah, no, I, I can, I can hear that in the response, mate, that, uh, and uh, again, different people view that differently and yeah, staying static doesn't seem like something that, that would be comfortable for you. And it's, it's personally, it's not comfortable for me either. I want to be challenged to, to use the gray matter because uh, that's all I've got. I, I can't, I can't repair a car or build anything or create anything. So the only thing I've got going for me is my brain. So if you, if that's not, 
if that's not challenged on a regular basis, then you, you sort of sit back and you get, um, it's, it's an uncomfortable existence if you're not um, uh, doing something to push yourself or the, or the environment which yeah. you went forward. So now I, I get that quite, uh, resonates with me quite, quite, um, quite a lot. Nick, last, last question for you. Yeah. And this is one that I've put to all my podcast guests. And it's one uh, that I, I don't know where you'll land on this one. I would have, I thought I might've had the answer before I asked it, but now I'm not so <laughs> sure. Uh, okay, it's, it's, cool it's, 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 but just based on this conversation, obviously, it's the nature versus nurture question. Are leaders born or made? It's a really good question to end on, man. And I hate to say that it, it can be both, but I think, I think that they're, I think that they're made. I think that, see, you can take somebody with talent, right? If we go back to the sports analogies, you can take somebody with talent, but actually honing in on that talent and getting them to truly understand what's there. Like it, it requires somebody to kind of nurture them, you know, if you will, in, into, again, Tom Brady, right? Was a nobody in, at the University of Michigan. Now, greatest of all time when it comes to the NFL quarterbacks, arguably. So I feel like, I feel like it's got to be a bit of a hybrid of both. I feel like they, that, that having talent, I think, is, a, is, is something that you're born with. I grew up playing baseball. I had my 15 minutes of fame. I played in the Little League World Series when I was 12, you know, 11 or whatever, 1992, um, 12 years old. And uh, you know, went to Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Had a fantastic time, right? I had delusions of grandeur that I was going to make to the bigs. Nothing ever happened. So be it. <laughs> I've gone a different a different way now. I think that you have to be born with with some sort of instinct in you, whether it's athleticism, whether it is leadership, whatever it should happen to be. I feel like that's got to be that's got to be born within. But then it also has to be coached and nurtured and cultivated to a certain level for you to 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 reach that maximum effort, if you will. I flip flop between podcasts around where I might uh, where my thinking falls on this because I've I've seen too many people in my life that fill that void of they're just naturally born uh, good leaders and if the circumstances are right this is where the made bit comes in if they've got the opportunities to progress themselves they can become the, those naturally gifted leaders that don't need too much training or coaching to be successful yeah. whereas others can come up through the ranks through all the the hard slog and, and the hard work that's required and they become good leaders in their own right because they've they've had all the lumps and bumps and have learned from the 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 school of hard knocks uh, so to speak rather than because they've just had some natural talent and yeah i i think if i'm being honest with myself on this i think it, it is it, it has to be a mixture of both because if we were waiting for good leaders just to be born organizations would go nowhere in industries like yours, you're dealing with businesses all the time, which means you're dealing with different leadership skills all the time. And I wonder how that changes you as a leader when you meet these people. Does it does it make you better? Do you do you actively try and learn from these new people that you meet in your travels, or is it more what you're doing in your own business that that takes you to that next level? I'm always open to learning more, and so I'm always open to seeing what it is that I can do. Again, to better myself, better my position, make myself that much more educated, regardless of the industry, the vertical, the, um, you know, whatever it should happen to be. I'm always open to to sort of soaking that up. You know, if we truly only use, you know, X amount of percentage of the brain, right? There's so much more um, that that capacity for for what it can can hold and contain and absorb and put to use. And so. I'm always open to it. Like I said, you know, earlier in the in the podcast about the software development, I'm learning that now. Do I have to do it? No. I mean, you know, I, I'm I'm not going to go write code after I learn how to actually write code. I, I, you know, I probably won't have the time to actually sit down and, and do that. But I'm learning it, and and maybe it'll come to use later. At the very least, it'll it'll make me that much more educated to have a, a reasonable, intelligent discussion with somebody down the line because I now have the basis or the foundation for, for that conversation. I'm always open to it. So everybody that I meet, I'm always curious as to what they do, why they do it, how they got into what they're doing. You know, for me, it's where have you been? Where are you now? And where are you going? You know, where, where you are now is, is, is usually directly related, obviously to, to where you've been, you know, good or bad, what potholes, what pitfalls have you, you know, avoided and or, 
fallen into that you've learned from and grown from to get you to where you are now. And in, 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 in turn, obviously, you know, what are you doing to better yourself as to where you're going? You know, what's the plan? What's the future look like? What's the roadmap for you? You know, I, I know where I want to go and it's not a financial measure. You know, it's not a, it's not a success as I mentioned, you know, in, in regards to the dollar mark, um, you know, for, for me, it is how many, how many lives can I inevitably make better, you know, just by starting my own little payments company here, right? My little corner of the universe. How many folks can I touch? How many lives can I change? And what sort of community can I build as a result of, of the efforts that I put in um, simply with my desire to try to change the world somehow, some way? I know it's a long-winded answer, but I also wanted to ask you though, Eric, I wanted to come back to, to something you mentioned earlier that um, with the nature versus nurture that, that you've kind of, you've kind of grouped it into a hybrid as well. Um, but you said that before you even asked me the question, you had an idea as to where I was going to fall. And I'm kind of curious to know what your thought was. Where did you think I was going to fall? I suppose, before you answered the, or asked the question. I would have said um, yeah. that, yeah, that you're made over time. And the guess only comes from looking at your past experiences. You've stepped up in the world that you work in and I'm um, only using your LinkedIn profile from, from memory to the point where you started your own business that it would seem to me counterintuitive to say you're the kind of person that might say leaders are born and then go from there as opposed to leaders are, are probably made. Now, the dimension I went with that you might have been more towards the made and not the born but you gave me an answer that wasn't what I was. So I, 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 got, it, I got it. I got it wrong, obviously. But um, you said it's a hybrid of the two, and um, yeah, yeah. And and look, it's it's me taking an educated guess from the people that um, I speak to on these podcasts because it's and it, it's typically one of those fun questions to ask at the end of it because there really isn't a right answer. And um, even if even if I wrote fifty papers on leaders can only be born they're never made i would have i would be pilloried from pillar to post from people saying to me oh that's bullshit this is how this is how good <laughs> leaders are made and we do it and i have i have a perfect example of it in the australian military so part of my part of the content that i do is looking at and speaking with um uh, people ex-military people and people that are currently serving in the australian military asking them um about their leadership and they and eminently they say good leaders are made and the australian military is an example of that that their training every day is about making better leaders at all levels of the Australian military and that's a perfect example the idea that they're naturally born just doesn't doesn't hold and I, I would never would have painted you as someone that would have said yeah they're only ever born because um, that's that's not what I saw interesting <laughs> interesting to yeah. um, interesting to ask the the question to see the the response and yeah, look, I get it right sometimes. I often get it more wrong than I get it right. But yeah, I've I've never been asked directly what I thought it was. I've just you know, I've said to people I have a I have an idea, but I'm not going to say what it is. And now that you put me on the spot, I, I, that's my response. And I, I, no, and I I appreciate and I respect that. I wouldn't have been offended either way, obviously, because I guess I I didn't fall on one side of the fence or the other. Man, I'm kind of riding it with the hybrid response but i truly do believe that but i i would say that they're more made than born but it still has to be that that you know that initial um, born with it sort of you know instinct um it has to come along the way when you have guests on podcasting and you're trying to get their lived experience sometimes i think does my guest think that there's a right or wrong answer here to what i'm asking and there really isn't a right or wrong to any of this like if if you'd if you'd been um, a, a different type of human being and said it's uh, the leader has to have control, it's all about the leader. People should just follow them. The you know industries industry agendas are set by the people at the top, and that's it. Very command and control type stuff. I'd be like, okay, great. That's that's your view of it, and that's something people need to hear. I'm, I'm sure people would be in disagreement with some of what you said, but at least that's there. And I I, I kind of sometimes forget that uh, when I'm talking to people like yourself that there is no right and wrong this it's more what what's your lived experience and tell me what you think what you think about a particular topic and, and i hope more guests down the track ask me because if i if i don't to self-disclose and say this is what i what, what i think you might answer um it doesn't lead to these conversations and um it's it's yeah. uh it's a way to get the gray matter going because this this topic and i've, I've now learned this quite 
quite um, quite profoundly is that people bring different things to the discussions around leadership, let alone their own leadership and what matters to them. And it's always a values laden discussion, not just a. Uh, I don't think it can ever be just a uh, values free discussion around why leadership matters to the people that I'm talking to. That there's always a degree yeah. of their own subjective view of the world, and that's informed by what they've seen in their travels good and bad which is the the point of the podcast eric i know that that we're, we're probably getting getting close to to wind down time my friend I, I i don't know what hour it is you know out your way but uh you know this has been this has been a blast for those listening this has been eric perez from talking leadership thank you again for joining me a lot more content to come and thank you nick for your time mate yeah a pleasure and an honor my friend